Hey everybody, here at CPAC again with some more interviews. You never know who you're going to find fighting for our freedoms, fighting for our liberties, or fighting for things in our country that are real important. With me is Father Frank. Father, how are you Good doing today? Good to meet you. I'm nice doing great. You. Doing great. This is an exciting gathering, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. And, 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 we're, and, and the reason why they don't see the crowd right now is because we're early. We are. You are an early freedom fighter. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I say freedom, and I think when people learn more about you. So let's tell a little bit about your story on how yeah. you got to the point you are today. Well, I have uh, been a Catholic priest since 1988, and uh, I uh, am the, in he the head of a ministry called Priests for Life. We're the largest ministry in the Catholic Church that is working for the freedom of a special group of people, the children in their earliest months of life. And the children Children in the womb. We're fighting against abortion, and uh, we're we're giving we're working to give women alternatives to abortion. Give them real options. Give them real freedom. And uh, and and in doing that, we're working for the defense of our nation because our nation is built on on the truth that God gives us our rights. So right. no human being can enslave us. No, you know anybody who's in quote unquote power in government. Right. That power is supposed to be service. They recognize that they have a God above them. Absolutely right. You're right and that absolutely. that God is the one who gives us our rights, and therefore they have to serve us and protect our rights, not right. rule over us. Exactly. That's a key difference. You're so awesome. You're amazing. We're fighting for that. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> and you talk about freedom, and, 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 you, and you brought something to my mind there. When you talk about fighting for freedom, for women's freedom, yeah. you know, everybody thinks that it's, it's a decision between, between pro-life or pro-choice, uh -huh. and, and, and everybody thinks that's your freedom. But what I think, what you just brought to my mind is, the media likes to say that you know, pro-choice is your only freedom. Uh, so no, people no, no. on on the pro-choice side say that's your only freedom. People on the pro-life side say that's your only freedom. Mm -hmm. But you're saying you're protecting everybody's freedoms, but you're finding a way to protect women more through what choice they choose. Yes, and let me give, put more of that in more perspective. People call, talk about uh, freedom of choice when they're defending the right to abortion, right? What we say is, wait a minute, that's contrary to fact. Because we work with the women every day who are, uh, I mean, we have thousands of pregnancy centers across the country. Uh, in fact, they outnumber the abortion clinics four to one. And these it. are places where women can come and say, look, I'm pregnant. I don't know what to do. Can you help me? And we give them different options. Adoption would be one of the options. Or we help them to overcome whatever obstacles are in their life. But here's the point. Women don't go to the doors of an abortion clinic because of freedom of choice. They go there because they feel they have no freedom and no choice. They feel trapped, abandoned, desperate, afraid. They feel like they don't have the, the support of the father. They feel like they don't have the support of their own parents. They just feel desperate. Right. And so what we're saying is, wait a minute, we're here for you. Let's work together to do what's best for you and your baby. And we find success with that. And, and then they say, they think, you know what they say to us? Thank you for giving me the choice. Thank you for giving me back my freedom. So the other side promises freedom, but you know, this is what the left does. If we look at what the radical left is doing to our country, you know, they, they talk freedom, but they want to enslave us. Right. They're enslaving us in a thousand different ways. They're trying to indoctrinate our children. They're wrecking our economy. They're ruining our border. They're putting us in danger internationally. And it's like, wait a minute, freedom comes from recognizing that, as our founders recognized, God is the source of our rights. And we all have to serve each other, not not uh, 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 suppress each other or control each other or, or take our freedoms away. I love this. This is amazing. And you brought something else to my mind when you said that when a woman chooses, you know, to have an abortion, they think it's they, they the the left tries to say it's a freedom. Mm -hmm. However, th that woman gives up her freedom after she's made that choice because she's now locked into, you know, a, a a demographic. We'll say that says that well, you made your choice on your freedom. That's your only choice from now here on out. Yeah. And you just now explained how much you like to protect all the freedoms that they have. But if they don't make that decision, well, it's despair that 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 drives them to that point yeah, right. because you know deep down. A mother knows it's wrong to destroy her child. She, she knows that that's a child growing in her. And she knows it's wrong to destroy that child. It's despair that makes her think, eh, it might be wrong, but I have no other choice. Might be better. You know? uh, yeah. And here's the other side of it, too. We help the women who have had abortions. We have a campaign called Silent No More. And those that have had abortions are speaking out about that experience. And they're saying it did not liberate me. It 
enslaved and, and devastated me. Exactly. So that's an important perspective to bring out. People can learn more about that at silentnomore.com. And then the final perspective in all of this is simply the question of, we believe in freedom. When does it start? Well, it seems to me freedom starts when our life starts. Right, exactly. I believe that the children in the womb have freedom too. You know, so in other words, we want to look at the most expansive view of freedom that we can. Human rights begin when human lives begin. Otherwise, they're not human rights, right? Because then you're saying there's some human beings that don't have human right, rights. Right, exactly. It doesn't make sense. No. So uh, rights begin, freedom begins when life begins. We've got to find a way. When there's one life growing inside exactly, another life, exactly we've right, got to find right. a way to support them both. I love this, and, and, and that's what you're doing. Yes, that's and, what we're doing. You know what, Father? i, I got to tell you, you have, this has been one of the most refreshing interviews I have done on the pro-life, pro-choice debate. Thank you. And, 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 and finding ways for women to choose, make, make a better choice. Yes. You explained this in a more of a freedom-oriented way. Yes. Which I think makes sense to, will make sense to more people. And I always say this, you know, God doesn't pick perfect people all the time, you know, right. and he doesn't pick the people that's going to bring everybody over all at once. He sometimes brings in a certain people, person to bring in a smaller group at a time. And it's those little steps yes. that make a difference. And I yes. think that you are building some of those little steps. Thank that's you. That's going to lead yeah. to a better, a, a bigger path. Mm -hmm. So in America, obviously, I might, we might, get, I might know what the answer is going to be, but I always ask people, where do you think our, our liberties and freedoms are most under attack? Oh, there's so many different ways. You know, one of the biggest dangers right now is the administrative state. In other words, we elect people. Now, we have to have fair and free elections. We have to make sure we have election integrity. That's one of the things we work on as well. But the question becomes, is our nation being governed by the people we're electing or by some unelected bureaucrats? And the more we learn about how what's going on today, we realize that there are these powerful institutions, there are these powerful agencies that are shaping policy, but the people doing the work are people that nobody knows who they are, right. nobody elected them, and sometimes they don't do the will of the people who are elected. It's like in, 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 in the, like President Trump talks about the deep state, you know, we never knew how bad it was. Uh, and now it's being exposed and you've got these people in, in positions in these federal agencies that do the opposite of what the president is telling them to do. Right. And wait a minute, it was the president that was elected, not you guys. Exactly. You know? So there has to be reform in this whole area. And, you know, the president should be free to, to fire uh, people in the, in the bureaucratic administration that aren't carrying out the platform that the people said that they want by electing that president exactly you know, so this is a threat to our freedom and i think it's a bigger threat than uh, than most of us realize you you point out something i like to talk about regularly is that growing level of bureaucracy yeah. that makes the rules makes these regulations that we the people have to live by and they're and they're creating them outside of the constitution outside of congress yeah. because they have the authority to do so and it's a big attack on our freedom my last question for you is how do you think americans can unite better to be able to fight for their freedoms and unite in such a way that we get this country back to those parents. We have to start by recognizing that there are certain differences at play in our nation right now that are irreconcilable. You know, it, it, you cannot reconcile uh, somebody who wants to say, uh, uh, you know, there are 73 different genders, you know, <laughs> with those who take the common sense view that, hey, there are men and there are women. You exactly. Know? And exactly. It, 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 there's no middle ground there, especially when those that are saying there's 73 genders want to ram that down the throats of our children right. above and, and against the, the, the desires of the parents. These are irreconcilable views. And you can go down the list on all the different issues. The first step towards... You know, reunifying our country is not to be so concerned about the divisions in our nation. What we need to be more concerned about is that we are on the right side of those divisions. There are some divisions that are irreconcilable. We've just got to unite around the truth. We've got to unite around freedom, as we've been discussing. We've got to unite around faith in the God who gives us those freedoms and build our nation from there with the people who agree with us and recognize that, like you also said, we're going to win over some people on exactly, the other exactly side, right. little by little, step by step, with gentleness, with kindness, but with clarity, with truth. But we're not going to be able to get them all, and we don't have to get them all. 
It doesn't mean we don't respect them. It doesn't mean we hate them. It means we have to build unity around. Unity is built around truth. Exactly. We've got to hold on to the truth, encourage one another. That's why where we are right now, this great CPAC conference, these conferences are so, so important because they're bringing, they're getting us to know each other. I mean, we just met today. We're get, they're getting us to, 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 to come together, to know each other. We've got to keep working together. And that's how we do what you just said, to build this nation, to save this nation, and to build it on that strong foundation of freedom. Father Frank, you are amazing. Now, like, like you said, we're just getting to know each other today, but uniting, I'm going to find ways to unite with you more frequently. Good, let's. Because you are an amazing person when it comes to freedom and liberty. And I love the fact, and I'm just going to say it like this, I love the fact that you talk about freedom and liberty in, where it's not so spiritual sounding. Right. You know, because right. that, 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 you know, I always say that sometimes mm. when you get too spiritual, you chase more people away. You do. You and do. You, found, you have found a proper balance between you know, bringing spirituality, God, faith, and following the, those guidelines to fight for freedom. And I think you're amazing. I want more people to find out more about you. Thank you. Let's work together. We will, Father Frank. Right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Everybody else, we got some more people here lined up for more interviews at CPAC. Stay tuned. Thank you so much.